Well, good morning. My name is Paul King from Lighthouse Christian Center, and I uh, have the privilege to bring to you organizing uh, your ministry. I'm going to kind of change what we're talking about a little bit there, but I'm going to give you some, uh, some things to think about over the next, what, 20 minutes or so, and, uh, but looking at just some things that we can do in our early childhood to kind of help organize, and maybe some things that you already know may some, be some things that are brand new, but just to think about uh, and to bring to the table uh, each and every week that uh, as you prepare, as you get ready, as you're continuing meeting with your teams. Um, so uh, just so you know, just a little bit about me, uh, I've been in my, uh, my uh, church for five years, was a children's pastor, also did youth ministry, but at the same time, I just recently became the lead pastor 10 months ago, and so here I am. In my final, I will say the final, depending on if uh, <laughs> Brent would like to bring me back or whatever, but, um, but to share with, with you just some tips, just some things that we can do, and then we'll also dialogue at the end, ask some questions, comments, go back and forth, kind of share your own ideas, those kinds of things. Um, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13, therefore prepare your minds for action, be self-controlled, set your hope fully on the grace to, to be get, excuse me, to be given you uh, when Jesus is revealed. So how can you best prepare your mind and life for service? Let's just open this up. If you want to write some things down, you can. But how can you best prepare your mind and life for service? Yeah, pray. pray. Yeah. Definitely. That personal relationship. Anybody else? How can you best prepare your mind and life for service? The word. <laughs> right. Yeah. Sure. Giving yourself enough time to be fully prepared and not rushed and crazy. Right. That time preparation. And all of us have so much of that ample time, don't we? <laughs> We've got countless hours, right? <laughs> so what changes might you need to make in your personal life in order to feel better prepared to serve? This is just something you can think about. Maybe you can answer these after we get through some of these. But it seems that Sunday comes so quickly. Like, I, it is tomorrow. And I've been, like, preparing all week long for my own, like, what I'm going to be speaking on on Sunday mornings. And, like, okay, where am I headed? What, what's going on? What's God, you're wrestling with it, you know? And how many of you, and I know this is early childhood, and maybe you have a, a curriculum, maybe you don't have a curriculum, but how many of you plan like six months, maybe a year in advance? Some of you do. I would truly, truly encourage you to do that. I would encourage you to plan like six months, even a year if you can. Sit down with your, uh, if you have a team of people, hey, what do we want to talk about? Especially now because it's closer to the end, you're getting ready to jump into January. What's January through June look like? What does that look like for you? Preparing ahead of time because then now you're ready if you're the leader of it, okay? But if you're in a classroom, wouldn't it be nice to know, man, this is what we're going to talk about with our uh, you know, with our, our, our preschool students or our kindergartners or, or our, um, you know, three and four-year-olds, whatever that may be. Wouldn't it be nice to know ahead of time rather than coming in and going, okay, what am I doing today? <laughs> but that preparation, you know, and, and as we talked about just a little bit here, I asked that question like we have ample time. We really don't because we have work, we have sports, family, homework with our kids or you know, your own homework, maybe some of you are going to school, whatever it may be, so you have homework, and then you're trying to find time to prepare for Sunday, and, and, and no one area is more important than the other, however, the nursery needs to be, like, at the top, because that's, like, the number one place where people, if you have young families coming in, they're going to be looking around going, okay, what's a, ch kid, what's a kid's ministry look like? Well, do they do they have enough people in the nursery to be able to hold the 10 to 15 babies that are coming in, if, if that's how many 
babies that are coming in? Do you have ample people? Do you have enough people there? The other, the other thing to think about is that you want to be able to send the message that God cares about these little ones, the least of these. It's not just a babysitting time. That's something that I've had to work through when I, for the whole entire time of doing children's ministry. It's not a babysitting time. They are actually being ministered to. This is their time that they can be ministered to. This is stuff you probably already know. It's not anything new. It's just a reminder to the whole team. And how often should you talk about it? I think you talk about it all the time with your early childhood team. You're talking to them or you're, hey, you're like sending that back up if you're one of the leaders in the room. Maybe you're not overseeing the ministry at large, but you're in the room. Hey, just a reminder, guys, we're here to minister to these little ones. Let's pray over them. Let's, 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 let's get the material so they can understand what God has made. How, does, how, how did he make you? And maybe not that deep of a conversation, but just he made you. He crafted you to be who you are. You are his, you're his workmanship. He's done this. He's created you to be who you are. Instilling that, I, that identity of Jesus Christ in them at such a young age. Uh, so, so you need everything to be in place before the first child steps into, into your area. So here's some things to think about. First of all, let's start with the cleanup, okay? Let's start with the cleanup. Parents want to see that the rooms are cleaned and organized, and these, uh, this sends a positive message that their kids are your number one priority. So when you leave that, that day, we're going to talk about before you leave and a checklist and those kinds of things, but when you come in, is it ready to go? Was the person that was in there on Wednesday night, did they do their job to set you up so you're ready to go on Sunday morning? Or was there a, a, a disconnect somewhere? So Clorox wipes are your friends. Quick, fast, easy. You know, if you're like, man, I've got to get out of here, great. Wipe things down, get it done, make sure things are in place, and then you're out the door. I, I want to share something with you, something that we do, because it's even faster than a Clorox wipe, is actually getting some RX. It's hospital cleaner, basically. I don't know if you've used RX before, but it kills anything. Um, and all you have to do is spray it and walk away. And when the kids come back in, it's completely safe. It's a hospital grade. You just it's it's called RX cleaner, RX cleaner, and it works wonders. There's not a there's not like this uh, potent um, uh, fragrance either. It smells very good. It's like it's just it's nice. And so when you spray it, you can walk away from it. Now I would I would encourage you to disinfect your toys, okay? <laughs> Periodically, don't just rely on that. But do disinfect your toys and, and anything, if, you know, those kinds of things. But it will, it will eliminate a lot of the germ factor that, uh, that we all face in early childhood, right? This is the time of year where you're writing up your little, your little half sheet saying, Mom, Dad, if your kid has green things coming out of their nose, maybe you shouldn't have bring them in. You know, um, those kinds of things. So really thinking through how, especially now, because the, the season, we're in that season of sickness. And how do you, how do you, get through that time and yourself to where you're actually at the at 100 percent and not feeling man i'm feeling sick today well it's probably because you've been working with the kids you know think through some of that stuff keeping up on the on the cleaning um stock up that's number two make sure that your room is inviting to children and and showers them with the welcome love of jesus set toys out how many of you set toys out before you kind of set up the room, you get it all set up, ready to go. So that and, and so that way the kids that are there, they come in, they're ready to they automatically have something, because how many of you know that some kids are coming in and they've already, man, they've had a rough morning already, and they're coming in and they're the first thing they no, don't leave me. You know, the crying factor. And you're like, okay, how do I handle this? How do I take this child and 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 actually help them? If the toys are already out and you're not having to set it up but while the kid's crying you already have set up a diversion for them. Hey, Johnny, come with me. Let's come over here. Bye, guys. Have a great time in service. You know, help the parents get them into where they need to go. The faster the child can't see them, 
the better off it's going to be. Now, I know that sounds like heartless. It's not. If the child, you know, hopefully you have some kind of guidelines in place that state that if the child isn't um, finally calmed down after a few minutes or so that you're sending out your, you know, you're sending out your little, your, your red flag, your alert. Hey, will you go find so-and-so or put up the 999s if you use nines or 911, whatever it may be, however you get a hold of people, uh, pagers, you know, those kinds of things, cell phones. Um, but uh, but how, it, it actually causes that diversion for them, and it helps them out. Have supplies ready for crafts or games. Take time to have a sample of the craft. How many of you guys do a sample before you come in? I, hey, that, that's so good. It's important to have that because, yes, you can, you, can, uh, you can have that ready to go, and, yes, you could work on the, on the project with the kids, but if you have it there, it's done, it's ready, you can show it to them especially that three- and four-year-old who wants to do it on their own. It may <laughs> – who wants to do it on their own. But they may have some hard times with some things, so you actually aren't, like, trying to put this together as you're walking them through it, having that sample ready. Again, this is, this is elementary stuff. This is stuff that we probably all know, but just reminders to think through. Now, this is what I was talking about just a few minutes ago. Read up. Don't come in on Sunday morning preparing your lesson. Now, true fire, that was something that when I heard that, I was like, yeah, don't be driving in on Sunday morning trying to prepare your stuff. <laughs> Understand it's in there. You can be, hopefully, that's what I was talking about. Hopefully, you've been preparing the whole week so when you do come in on Sunday, you're just glancing at it. And you're saying, yeah, I'm just reminding myself of the major bullet points, the things that I need to hit, hit on throughout the week or, or throughout that time. Read the material and make notes of what you, uh, what you need to do to prepare. Pray for each child to soak up God's love. Pray that, the, that God would transform your heart as you serve the children. How many of you put yourself in that place during that time of preparation and saying, God, help transform me before I even step foot into the classroom? Or before I take that child from that parent and receive them and start hugging on them and, and loving on them and, and, and having that compassion, God help me. So that way, when you get in, all you're doing now is pouring out upon them that love, that, that joy that you have. Um, use different teaching methods and styles. That's where those games come in. That's where the craft comes in. The video maybe. How many of you guys use video for music? like your worship time, give those kids worship time. Even if it's, I mean, it doesn't even have to be like a, a I mean, you're going to have a, a, a time for it, but it doesn't necessarily have to be like this structured time. Some of you probably have large enough groups that you could do a structured time and say, hey, we're actually going to do this now. We're going to have a worship time. And then you throw on your, your group, you know, that, that you have or whatever it is for your preschoolers, whatever you're using, and you're, you're, worshiping God and they're doing the motions my God is bigger than big watch okay so you just those songs that that they can grasp and they're they're fun and they're catchy yeah yeah worship right well I I, I always uh, fell in the line with group because they have a preschool group it's a pre there's a preschool program that they have. I'm spacing on the name of it. I'm sorry. But Group Publishing puts out a worship for preschoolers. And it's all interactive. World worship. Yes, World in Worship. Thank you. And it's, it's uh, um, yeah, Whirl. Yep, Whirl, like spin. And, and Whirl again, like N with a little. Yep, N with, uh, with an apostrophe and then Whirl uh, in Worship. And it's stuff that if you're using group material like for VBS, it's the same songs, but it's at their level. It really is. Um, I've used uh, even um, if you, not that I'm a, uh, just a group fan, but I but I used I've used a lot of group. Um, the uh, even like the VBS songs because they're geared for that right in that. Um, early elementary, like first, second, third graders, that can even be brought into your four and f like kindergartners, perfect age range, you know. Um, I'm trying to think who else is out there that has uh, 
preschool music because that's a hard. Who does? Yancy. Oh, Yancey does. Yeah. So does uh, so does Hillsong. Hillsong has they they've put out uh, the one they put out one. I forget who. I forget the name of it now. I'm sorry, forgetting names. But Hillsong does a preschool one too. Hillsong, if you if you do both children and preschool, Hillsong ha- basically does the full line. I mean, all the way from preschool, they've started that in the last uh, two years. Um, but preschool all the way through the adults. So, I mean, they've been trying to hit every age range. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're right. You could bring out the older ones. Yeah. Right. Mm hmm. No, they they never go away. You're right. The older ones, right, right. Sure. No, they don't. And I and I and it's it's not that we don't. Well, I'm not talking those songs. It really is. How do you just get all of them? Because there's so many out there. I mean, there really is. I mean, it doesn't. You could go back to, um, um, gosh, uh, Rob Evans. Don't it, dude? Okay. Cedarmont Kids has stuff too. I mean, and Cedarmont put preschools out. Yep, they put preschool stuff out. So, I mean, there's so many things out there. And even if you're looking, that was like, man, when I was first started, that was like the number, that was like the line. Yep, CBD. It's CBD. CBD. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Make sure that you to prepare your heart during the week. Spend time alone with God. That's a. I heard somebody mention that this morning already. That's good. It's all good. Um, but preparing yourself for the lesson. How many of you actually like take time when you're done? You're already looking at next week's lesson. Like on Sunday afternoon, you're kind of preparing and moving in that direction. Yeah. You're seeing what's coming. Right. If I'm stuck, I'm going to think of next week. What can I, what can I take from what did Sandy put in next week's lesson so I don't have to think about bringing it for next week? Because <laughs> I'm a forgetful with you, which can happen. Yes. Yeah. Sure. How many of you are full time? How many of you are part time? I was getting. I was getting there. I'm getting there. How many of you are volunteer? Are you volunteer EC or are you volunteer teacher? Like you oversee EC? And you teach. A little bit of both. Okay. So now when as you're overseeing, how soon are you getting that information to your to your leaders? A month in advance. Yep. And so I have to think it all out. Sure. And if I don't, I'm just gonna make sure I still get that information. Perfect. Yep. Good. Yeah. Really hope they're all ahead. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. We, right, we really hope that they're looking ahead. How many of you communicate throughout the week to your team? Somewhat? I saw your hand. Yeah, we use, um, we have a weekly digital uh, curriculum, and so we load the whole thing onto Google Drive. Yep. So we have the whole week that that's going. Mm-hmm. And then there's paper files and the research notes on the Google Drive. Good. Right. Caroline is an engineer at Bruce Wayne, mm-hmm. at, uh, which is also the same with our Bring Summer Garden Reader Group. Because our summer garden is going to be doing our preschoolers will be doing our nursery, I mean the nursery, and we 
they do the thing, the whole thing, like what I love is that they take the same curriculum and they do literally zero change. Yeah. Uh, but it's the same thing. So we as teachers can get together and say, okay, this is the story that we're teaching. And it just four weeks at a time. So you do the three months. Um, but it's a month. It tells you every week this is the, these are the main points. Yeah. This is what you should tell your kids to do when you get done. This is, which is really cool because, you know, we have three month olds and we have kids that are almost three. So it's cool to be able to use that story and just one week. Yeah. That's important. It's so important. And I'm glad to hear it because, you know what, there's a lot of people and a lot of leaders who wait till Saturday because of what I talked about just a few minutes ago. They have life. They're busy. They're, I mean, you get home and it's, it, it doesn't stop. There's laundry. There's dinner. There's, I mean, it, the list just keeps going on and on and cleaning and everything. And, and then there's the, the little incidental things that come up along the way because now you got mom calling you and saying, hey, you know, I'm really having a hard time with Joey and Susie and, you know, how do you – so there's always, always those things that are coming up. So it's highly, highly, highly important. So if your teams are waiting till Saturday, I would encourage you to really, really get them to th be thinking ahead and really be thinking, okay, what's coming next? How, what is my piece of the pie on Sunday morning? Because you could split out. You could, I mean, you could really delegate everything out to everybody, and you could just back off and be the leader of those leaders. Unless you're really one of those, and I, have, I do, I have somebody who's like, I've got to be in the midst of it all. And I'm really trying to help them understand that, hey, you've got to back out just a little bit. Because you need to be able to touch as many of those people as possible. And when you're locked into one thing and you can't leave because you're there, just think about that for just a moment. If, if there's an issue that comes up, who are they coming to? They're coming to you. Whether you're the leader or you're the key leader in that room, that, the other leaders that are in there are going to be coming <laughs> And then that leader's probably going to come to you. So it's really, really thinking through how can you back out just a, just a little bit. Maybe you can still be in some, doing some of the things, but how can you back out just a, just a little bit so you can focus on the team at large too? That's just a little nugget. Show up. Right. Hang it up. Number four. There's going to be a list of things that you're going to have to do before you leave from from uh, from where you're at. So cleaning up, managing papers, emptying trash, picking up toys. Take time to post a checklist by each classroom. By each classroom door so your leaders can follow your procedures, those things that you have in place. Now this is, uh, and you'll see the, the sample checklist here at the bottom of what you can do to, before you hang everything up. Um, but really having that in place because, you know, they're going to be going through their checklist in their own head. But if you have a list there, then they're not going, what's, what's the next thing I'm supposed to do? And then if they forget something, they're walking out, and then you're coming back in because you're the leader of it, and you're overseeing it, and you come in, and then you're going, um, yeah, I can tell that they didn't vacuum. I can tell that they didn't wipe down the counters or the tables or the chairs or, or whatever it may be. They didn't put the trash outside the door. If that's kind of a helpful piece for the janitor, if you, you know, those kinds of things. But having that procedure list in place, so it's right there visible. They can see it, and it's, um, there's no questions. No questions, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it's like when you have that checklist posted, there's never an excuse for another minute 
right. working in that part of your group to not do this. Right. Because they know, okay, but you didn't turn off the lights, it's on the board. Kind of thing. So that everybody is held accountable. Uh, yes. Uh, before we had it posted, there were a lot of issues uh, that we, I was like, <laughs> panic has ensued when I come in on Sunday morning and nothing has changed. And where we, th at that point, I was going up an hour early because we had been warned that I was going to be late. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Any other thoughts? Any, any? Do you guys have a checklist? Mm -hmm. You do? No? Well, here's just some things that you can have as a sample checklist um, for setup. Uh, review your material. You've already studied it and you know what it is and what you're gonna be talking about. So that means that you're like reviewing, like we said, a week in advance, kind of preparing yourself, little bits of time throughout the day or throughout the week. Uh, if you have name tags or you have ministry t-shirts or something like that, make sure that you have that prepared and ready to go, or maybe they're already in their room, and when that leader comes in, they can just automatically put it on or however you, however you do that. Um, set up supplies you will need, such as crafts. Um, log into the check-in kiosk if you have it, or maybe you have somebody who's already overseeing that piece, um, or if you have name tags, have the markers and the name tags ready to go for those, those individuals that are going to be coming in. Um, snack boxes, uh, tables in each room, you know, counters on, on each counter and table. Post allergy alerts. How many of you post an allergy alert? Peanut free zone, all that kind of stuff, non-dairy, you name it. There's so many allergies out there these days. Um, Prepare for the snack and the beverage. Now, you know, maybe that's not you. Maybe that you give that to somebody. That's a role that you could actually just say, hey, I need you just to come in and prepare this every week. Here it is. We've got four classrooms. All four classrooms need a little Dixie cup of cold fish, whatever, you know, um, and a pitcher of water. And here's the little Dixie cups for the water, you know, whatever it may be. Um, pray for the kids with other leaders. How many of you take time uh, when you come in, you take time with the team beforehand and just say, hey, let's just pray for this day. Do you take time in the, in the morning and do that? I, uh, it would be almost like a service planning time, service, uh, pre-service, uh, just going over some of the last minute details, some of those things. Hey, here's the craft, you know, just to remind you that this is what we're doing, you know, walking through some of those things and, and, and making it available so that way uh, they're there you know that they're going to be there then. So um, that's one of those things. Uh, showing up, uh, we, we ask 30 minutes prior to. And um, sometimes even, so if I'm asking my team, if I was to ask my team to show up 30 minutes prior to, so if we start at 10 o'clock, they're showing up at 9.30, that means nobody's downstairs until 9.45. Leaders are downstairs, that gives them 15 minutes to do what they need to do, and... Um, and then, but that means that if I'm the leader of it, I'm showing up at nine o'clock, 30 minutes prior to my team. And, um, and so that means that gives me time to prepare for myself. Or if there's anything else that if you, like I said, if you have your children's pastor or you have your pastor, you're on staff, you're, what, you're a volunteer, whatever it may be, that gives you time to make those connections with those individual people and say, is there anything you need that I can help you with? Because you're already set up and ready to go. So now you become a team player and not just, man, now I'm really focused in my one area and that's it. So I, I'm big on teams. That's just me, huge on teams. And, and I think the more people you can get involved, the better. And however you can work that in. Um, sample before you leave, kind of clean up checklist. Sanitize and neatly put away the toys. This again, this is stuff that's that you can post up. Um, categorizing so all boxes, uh, blocks that are together, animals are together, uh, kitchen items are together, and so on. Empty trash cans put away, leftover curriculum supplies, uh, put leftover snacks and pictures in the supply closet. Turn off uh, the checklist. Or excuse me, the check-in system. Um, place dirty laundry in a bin. Uh, 
put on clean sheets on the cribs. If you have cribs, put do that. We are blessed to have somebody that will take the laundry for us and do it at their house. And that's a huge blessing. Um, Turn off the swings, music player, any other electronics. Uh, again, spray Clorox everywhere. Spray and let it dry. This would also be the, the RX if you have it. You can spray that on there. Um, Clorox wipes to sanitize the surfaces, such as diaper changing tables and countertops. Uh, use non-toxic disinfectant for areas such as the door and uh, cabinet to knobs, toy chests, or, or even shelves. It's just a, a, a brief thing, little, just a small thing that you could put together and, and, and have up. Um, any other, any questions, any, any thoughts? We have a little bit of time now. We can take the next uh, about 15 minutes or so and, and, uh, or anything that you guys have that, that, uh, in, for maybe from, maybe from this or maybe not from this, but you just have some other ideas that have been coming to your mind that you want to, want to share or maybe ask in this room. Right. Let me, let me, I see hands, I see some, some thoughts, people's wheels are spinning. I want to go back to, um, Emily, what your, what your, what your question was in regards to how do you get your people in? I think you hit on the head how to get them there. It's saying that someone's counting on you. Someone's counting on you. That's huge. And I would say if you don't have an early childhood, like, handbook, or if you don't have, like, a children's ministry handbook that includes early childhood, put it in there. Say, people are counting on you, especially when you have multiple services. If you're, it, There's churches now that, I mean, I think of, of a church in Marysville. They're back to back to back to back to back. And, and so literally the time frame between each service can range anywhere between five to ten minutes. So if you think about that, if that person shows up late, that's me, sorry. But if they show up late, now you've just set that person back 15 minutes because, and they've missed worship service. Because most of our worship time has, has been more condensed because of the multiple services. So the pastor's evens are messages are even being condensed to like 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. So you have to think about some of those things. If you don't have it in policy, put it in policy. Policies are amazing. Procedures, you can call them whatever you want. Policy procedures, but, but do a handbook of some sort that states this is what early childhood is. This, and, and, and for your preschool, whatever. This is what it looks like. We need this, and we need everyone to be in place because someone is counting on you. Whoever that may be, that may be the next, the, the volunteer that is waiting for that volunteer to come in. It can be that new family that's walking through the door. And I've actually found myself saying um, that very thought that you had in regards to, uh, oh, church is 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 about me it's selfish if i can say that it is it is but it's how do you shift the culture to where it's not when you're coming to church it's not about me it's about god and the people that are coming through the door and that can be that can be somebody who you've known for 30 40 years okay it can be we're not discounting them but we have to remember that this is encompassing everyone, okay? So the new person that comes in off the street, the person that's been there, this is now their second time. Now this is somebody who's been here for five years. Now we're looking at 10 years. Now we're looking at 20, 30, 40, however big your church is and however deep it goes generationally, okay? But I have come to the conclusion that we as, as a church have come to the point where it's church is about me when really church is about them okay and and it's and it's and it's not about a building could we can do all of our stuff elsewhere we totally can um we're all blessed to have a building to you know um whether it is a church planting or or wherever it may be we're blessed to have a place to worship god 
And so, but just looking through some of that in the different perspectives of the people, and I love the idea of getting somebody to walk through. So anytime I get, an, I was getting a new volunteer, I said, I want your perspective now. Anytime I got a new volunteer, now you look through it through your eyes because you're new, you're walking through this. Is there anything that may be a little bit disjointed? You tell me. And that opens the door up for them, and it opens the door up for you, and now you've built a, a, a communication pathway where they're thinking, I have no communication with this, with this individual because they're the lead, or they're a teacher in this room, or... Well, and then it's not intimidating right. them because they know who they need. I'm going to hold this, and we're going to stop recording, and we're actually due to go in in 10 minutes. So I'm going to stop here, continue the conversation, and um, but I thank you.